Now it's clear that ICT, as Ian also suggested, has become more important than ever to our economic growth, development, and job creation targets. And uh, the potential of ICT, certainly, uh, its impact is on just about every aspect of our lives. It's astounding, actually. Just this week, the Times carried a piece on a guy who's linked or was linked to Apple, talking about the importance of sensors. Uh, in a decade's time, it was suggested in this piece earlier this week, most of the things connected to the internet will be sensors. They will measure people and the planet and analyze data for use in making decisions. The benefits in healthcare, for example, would be enormous. Just imagine if your cell phone also measured your heart rate or told you when you should drink a glass of water or that you're coming down with a flu. I'm not sure how many of you watched the Star Trek series and TV, but many of the technologies in that series are now a reality for at least the elites globally, uh, even if the masses are still excluded from a large part of that. Uh, I'm told that Samsung just launched its Galaxy Gear smartwatch that in many ways emulates the communications devices from the Star Trek times or series. Today we live in a world that has become more intelligent and smarter, so to speak. We have smart cities run by sensors that de detect everything from traffic flows, electricity consumption and water levels in dams. Smart ID documents, which are issued at the birth of a baby and remain with you for life, containing all the electronic information you require, including smart wallets, to store cash in similar senses that a credit card or debit card does. Smartphones with internet access and many other capabilities which we all know of. Smart TVs which connect to the internet and recognize hand and face gestures to allow users to change channels and the volume, for example, of the TV by using simple hand movements. Smart classrooms with smart whiteboards connected to the internet and also allowing teachers to write on the board with smart ink allowing the information to be saved directly to a computer, smart homes, with automatic motion detectors, detectors, face and iris recognition, to unlock doors and auto lights and air conditioning systems, smart home appliances, fridges linked to the internet, for example, and hi-fi systems automatically downloading music. These technologies have two things in common. They require sensors, and software to operate in a so-called smart fashion, which opens up huge opportunities for people to exploit by designing new gadgets and software applications to run in these environments. So the world we're living in is changing rapidly, and we as South Africans, not just in government, need to do more to be prepared to take full advantage of these technological changes to improve the quality of our fellow countrymen and women. And this is the ultimate aim of the policies of our government. If we do not connect as a country with this digital world, we are going to be left far behind, and our prospects of growth, development, and job creation will be substantially reduced. The digital divide between us and other countries will increase. And more importantly, the digital divide between the connected and not connected, between the haves and the have-nots in our country, will increase. So, increasing the social inequalities in our country. ICT has huge, huge potential to ensure inclusive growth and development, but it also has much the same potential to increase the inequalities in our society. It therefore has to be managed and harnessed to reduce inequalities. That, in fact, is the government's ultimate aim. Interestingly, Africa is the growing market in cellular phone telephony. While Africa still lags behind, uh, the rest of the world in terms of internet and broadband penetrations, things are certainly changing. I attended recently the International Telecommunications Union and the International Multilateral Partnership Against Crime Threats workshop on cybersecurity in Burkina Faso. As the world continues to dramatically multiply its capacity for the movement of information electronically, increasingly citizens, businesses and organizations interact virtually. But with this come new threats, and countries have to protect their economies, societies, and peoples from these threats. The partnership with the ITU and IMPACT has resulted in significant progress being made to capacitate developing countries in particular to protect themselves from cyber threats. We in this country need to do more. We have become active in this project. In fact, we are one of the first supporters of it. 
But uh, whether we're government or large corporations or small businesses or NGOs or schools or individuals, and as we increasingly make use of the internet, we have to, of course, do it more securely and safely. So just as we are aware of the opportunities that a fully connected society will bring, we're also mindful of the threats that come along with it. But we need to do more in this area as government in cooperation with the private sector, experts, and civil society. And some two weeks ago, we launched the National Cybersecurity Advisory Council. We are aware that many countries in Africa are moving quickly and are developing innovative applications and solutions in the process. Countries such as Kenya have made significant progress and have developed a reputation for innovation as well. Rwanda is poised to make significant investments in broadband, as in Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal, and other countries on our continent.